Welcome back to Core Cutting Today, where we break down some of the biggest stories happening in the world of core cutting, including today, YouTube TV is rolling out an updated library for its DVR and on-demand content. We'll tell you what's new and when you should expect this. DirecTV is objecting to FCC rules that will make it harder for it to have early termination fees and other fees out there. And lastly, Roku's new line of pro, their high-end line of televisions are now for sale. These stories and a whole lot more coming up in a quick second. First, if you wanna learn more about these stories, check out the show notes and in the first pinned comment, I'll put a link to each story there so you can read them for yourself and come up with your own opinions. I'd love to hear from you. If you're new here, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button, hit that thumbs up, let YouTube know you enjoy what we do here so YouTube recommends our videos to more people. With that said, let's dive into it, starting with YouTube TV's rolling out an update library for your DVR. One of the main complaints about YouTube TV has been the library. People love the fact they can record unlimited amount of content and keep it for nine months. The downside is sometimes finding it and making it discoverable is kind of hard. Now YouTube has slightly updated the guide, removed the menu from the middle, moved it up to the top for YouTube TV, and has new tabs like new for you, sports, television, some of the old, those are ones they already had, but new tabs help make discovering the content you want easier. Some people already say they love this. Some people already say they hate this new guide or for the library, I should say. It's kind of tough. Seems like YouTube TV just cannot seem to find a, a library system that people really like. I'm not really sure if it means what that means, but overall though, I think it's usable. In our experience of testing the YouTube TV, I've been able to um, use this to effectively find the content I want. Uh, but many people just wish there was a by date list of, hey, this was recorded yesterday kind of content. But good news is YouTube TV is heavily working on making it better and improving its guide and its library system there. All right, let's keep moving along. DirecTV has objected to FCC rules that would ban hidden fees and early termination penalties. So FCC is in the process of creating new rules that would force cable companies and satellite companies to do what they call all-in pricing and eliminate early termination fees. Now. DirecTV is objected, saying the FCC does not have the authority to do this. They don't um, believe they should. Not surprising. They're not the only ones. Um, we talk about DirecTV, but other companies have also voiced objection to these rules. Now, these so-called all-in pricing rules would have required everybody to fully disclose the pricing they have and fully disclose or eliminate some of these hidden fees and put them right into the upfront billing. I'm a big fan of this because I've never been a big fan of many of these hidden fees. If you watch my channel, you know I'm always harping on um, RSN fees and re uh, regional broadcast television fees. These ones really bug me because you advertise these channels as part of the package, but then when you get the bill, there's an additional fee for these channels, which wouldn't bother me if I could say, oh, I don't want those channels, don't charge me, but you can't. It's a mandatory fee. If it's a mandatory fee like that, it should have been a part of the advertised price for that bundle. At least that's my personal opinion on it. But the FCC is looking at that and DirecTV has um, vigorously objected to that through their representatives in DC as they work through ways to object to these um, new pricing systems that will make them list higher prices. That's a tough thing. You know, cable companies, it's not just a DirecTV thing, use these practices of fees and more so they can advertise the lower prices and I, yes, I get it that if you read the contract, you read, you read, or read down further, you can find some of these fees. But when they put a big price on the TV for an advertisement, that's not the price you're paying. You're paying all the fees down here in very small text message, text on the screen. And that's, I think, where a lot of people have problems. We'll see if the FCC follows through on their plans and actually enforces these rules that they're talking about imp implementing. We'll keep a very close eye on this. But let me know what you think. Question of the day. Should the FCC force companies, and such as um, DirecTV, but cable companies and the like, to fully disclose the price of their services in clear English and part of the advertised price. No more of this one price, but then you have all these fees that can add, sometimes for cable companies, 40 or more dollars to your bill every month. Leave me a comment, let me know what you think. Now, if you haven't seen my breaking news story yesterday about Roku OS 13 and the new Roku Pro remote coming out, now, um, check that out. I talked all about those yesterday. There's a really nice new Roku Pro remote available that you can buy for most Roku players and TVs. But there's also a new line of Roku high-end Pro televisions. Now, this is Roku's high-end line. It's pretty nice. 
It includes improved sound by dual side firing speakers, instead of down firing speakers. Um, tons of QLED um, quality here. 120 hertz panels, HDR10, along with Dolby Vision IQ, and all kinds of other features. And available in 55, 65, and 75 inches, starting at $899.99, basically 900 bucks. But it's a really nice TV for the price. Also has a flush mounted wall system, so it can mount flush against the wall, not need to be propped out with a um, TV mount. Overall, a very nice TV, now for sale, Best Buy, uh, Walmart, and Amazon, in stores at Best Buy, online at Amazon, Walmart also. So check that out, really nice lineup of new televisions, and I'm gonna to try to get my hands on a review unit. If I do, I'll have a full review here at corecarsnews.com. I've reached out to Roku, and right now, Nothing in the works, but I'm going to see if I can make something happen. All right, Bally Sports will air the final three Red Wings um, games, the NHL games, simulcast on free over their television. Now, NBA and Bally Sports struck a deal allowing some NBA teams to air some of their games on free over the air television in their markets. Now, the Red Wings through NHL are doing the same, but this time it's going to be simulcast. So if you live in Detroit, Bally Sports will still offer the game, but you'll be able to watch it on a local television station, um, TV20 WMYD will air it for free, simulcast the same as Bally Sports. Really cool, hopefully more sports teams get this and they simulcast more content online. Be interested to see how this all plays out in the long run. All right, if you're a fan of Friendly TV, the cheap live TV streaming service that can be had under 10 bucks for a lot of good channels, they're adding some local independent TV stations in a handful of markets. Now, this is a combination of Scripps and Mariantha Broadcasting Company, and includes mostly independent stations, and one CW affiliate will now be streaming live through Friendly. Now, uh, we've heard rumors they were testing this, and now it's official, but the channels are not going to be live when you're watching this. They say the channels will be live by April 30th, 2024. Now, this comes straight from um, Friendly. I had somebody ask me, well, I'm being told by chat that there's no new channels coming. Don't trust chat messages. I quote the actual executive in my story we talked to about this, so check that out. But you can always take chat messages with a grain of salt. Often chat wants to do one or two things, get you off as quickly as they can so they can get to the next person. Or let's be honest, often customer service chat supports some of the last people to know things. But again, will not be live until April 30th. No one has give exact dates when other than they'll be live by April 30th. So keep a close eye on that. All right, live free news is becoming more popular. Now, if you watch uh, this week's video, I know I answered one question about why are uh, Fox News, CNN, MSNBC, and the like not offering a standalone streaming version where I could just subscribe to them. One of the things I said here is there's a growing amount of free content from major players, and now CBS is diving even more into free live news 24-7. CBS has already had a 24-7 channel. A lot of it was re-airing of content. Well, now CBS is going to be investing in more original programming, including overnight live news coverage. CBS Sports on April, or CBS Sports, CBS News on April 22nd will relaunch as a free 24-7 news channel called CBS News 24-7. And with that, they'll be, um, throughout the year, rolling out new programs that will allow them to have more live 24-7 coverage on the CBS app. Now, they've already had very good coverage during regular daytime, especially Monday through Friday. With this rebranding and this renaming, they'll be um, rolling out new features here or new content to give more 24-7 coverage. So let me know, what are your favorite news programs out here? Have you tried it out? This will be available through Pluto TV and other streaming services, also including the CBS app. All right, question of the day. If you have a question for me, leave me a comment. Start off with something like a question for Luke so I know it's something that you want me to answer. I will um, answer the questions as best I can um, here and do my best to answer them um, either in the comments or here. If I don't, re-ask it and I'll do my best to answer them. Again, start off with a question for Luke. So with Roku announcing new TVs, new remotes, new OS, a lot of people have been asking, will there be a new Roku player this year? And there could be. Now, Roku televisions, smart televisions, are slowly taking over the market, and that seems to be where Roku's putting a lot of effort, but they've been very clear that streaming players are still very important to them. They did not release a new streaming player last year, 
but we'll keep a close eye on it. Very well could be. Now, what model do I think is most likely to be upgraded? It's probably the Roku streaming stick, though the Roku Ultra is possible. It hasn't been that long since the Express models have been updated. We're going to be keeping a very close eye on this, but right now there's been no leaks or rumors of it. And my guess would be if the Roku sticks to their tradition, it'll probably be a fall launch if they do do one. Well, that's it for today. I hope you have a fantastic day. Take care. Be safe. I'll talk to you all real soon.